My bread and peace of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles in Psalms. Psalms 127. It's right to say Psalms chapter 127, or just Psalms 127, 127, because there, those are many books. Each, each Psalm here is a book uh, on its own. It's different than Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 2. Here, it's Psalm 127. I'm going to read together just verse number 1. Amen. Who didn't have the Bible can read it here on the projection. Let us all read together. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, we have spoken often in the last few days about reconstruction. And we are studying inside of the book of Nehemiah the, the reconstruction of the walls of Jerusalem. And we will see that this reconstruction is taking place because the Lord wants to bring to, into the church uh, an awakening for the prophetic moment in which we are living. The Lord wants to awaken us and so that we may seek every day more and more a great closeness, closer, closeness with the Lord. So that there is not may there is no gap or anything that may prevent us from turning into a targets of the mercy and of the project of God. And tonight we're going to speak a little bit about what it is, what is an edification, a construction. Firstly, this text we can identify two important topics. Regarding this text, two things have been stand out here. The first thing is the importance of the participation of God in our spiritual life. From the participation of God in everything that we might do. And the second point is that if we don't have the participation of God, in our plans, in our projects, they will be all in vain. What does it mean, the, the word in vain, the expression in vain? Now the youth, the ones that speak in English better than, than us, the word in vain here has the meaning of something that has not been reached, achieved yet. It's something that has not been finalized. Something that was made uh, without any reason. Something that has no meaning. For, like, for example, you work, you study, you dedicate yourself, you make a tremendous effort, and at the end of the day, you end up frustrated. Every time that you plan everything that you made an effort for, you have not been able to achieve the expected objective. So the Lord here it speaks exactly about that. And that the person that doesn't have the Lord participating on that person's life, whatever it is, my familial life, or physical life, a spiritual life, and everything that 
that person might do, we will all be in vain. In this text also, we can subdivide in two parts. The first part speaks if the Lord, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Who build it? And then he continues, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So then we see here in this text something that is very important. Two points are very important because the Lord, he says here, speaks exactly about what it is, what our life is, our individual life, which is our home, which is our own effort for our own benefit, and also what is the city. The house is a unity, and the house is a group, a collection, is a community. And in this text, we will see several aspects that are very important for our spiritual life. Because what God wants for us is that we might have the Lord as our teacher, as our mirror. And so in order for men to grow, we have, you know, now we concentrate on, his, on spiritual life. We could here interpret here in many aspects in your know, familial life and relationship between uh, son and father or daughter and mother, relationship between uh, uh, employer and employee. <coughs> but now we concentrate on how important it is for God to be participating in our spiritual life. Because what matters for us is the spiritual side. Because if the spiritual side is going well, if the spiritual side is well, everything else is well. If we give attention, if you give priority to, to the spiritual side, to, to those who are seeking the Lord, to those who are making an investment, investing their lives and their time, toward an eternity, if you are investing your time towards this, then the Lord tonight has many advices for us, because the text speaks clearly about that, and the entire word of the Lord encompasses this, because it is not possible for you to build a spiritual life if you don't have the help from the Lord. Because man was created by God. Man was made by God. And in order for us to receive the best advice, in order for us to receive the advice that, are going to be to, that will work out, nothing better than the Holy Spirit. Because when man wants to build a house, or makes a reform and edify a house. He needs to count on people that understand uh, about their own business. It is worthless if you decide to make a reform in your house and having a knowledge or having an experience, uh, having a know-how of what you want to do. You're not going to do the stuff right. You're going to do everything wrong. You're going to try. It's not going to work out. At home, my wife gave up. I don't do any reform in the house. Now, I'll spend the money, I'll hire someone that knows. Because when you say that you're going to do, you end up not doing it. So, in order for us not to have problem anymore, not to fight, or either we're gonna buy something brand new so we don't have problem or headache, because the worst thing is for you to promise something and not to do, and when you do, it's, not, it's never good. So for our spiritual life, we need to depend on the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit is the greatest architect. He, he is the best 
master of the work because the Lord has blown in us the breath of life. It's because the Holy Spirit that gives us advice. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks to our ear. He is the one who is with us every day. He is the one who follows us. He is the one who realizes what we need. He is the one who is seeing our, our failures, our flaws. And nothing better than the Holy Spirit to teach us how to please the Lord. In a certain occasion, Jesus spoke about a construction of two houses. Remember this parable? The construction that was made upon the sand and the one that was made upon the rock. And exactly this. Sometimes you do something, you build a life spiritually speaking, you build a project on top of sand. Because you want to do what is in your own head. You don't want to hear the advices from the Lord. You don't want to hear the instruction from, from the Lord. You don't want to allow God to interfere and to show you the right way. But to those who are heeding, that hear to the voice of the Lord, the, the instructions from God, they are building their house upon the rock. And the storm might come, and the flooding may come, the same storm will come upon the two houses. But the one that is built on the rock it remains. The one that was built on, on the sand will be destroyed. And before the storm, you look, you can't tell. Everything looks nice. It has a ceiling, has walls, has, it was painted, has doors and windows. Everything looks right. But when the trial comes, when the difficulty comes, that's when you're going to know whether this person uh, whether this house was truly uh, has its foundation on Jesus. And many times it lasts for years, 20, 30, 50 years, 80 years inside of the church. But when the storm comes, when the infirmity comes, that always comes to everyone here many times, when the bad weather comes, so then the person is shaken. I always serve the Lord. I've always been a good person. I always helped the, my neighbor. I've always been a person that good, did good deeds. People get confused. Good deeds? This is, this is something that we need to do because it is our obligation. You don't do this. You don't help the, your neighbor because God is is saying, no, that's right, it's a command, but you, you help others because you have a heart. You have a person in need, you extend your hand to someone, you open up your door for someone that is in need because you have a heart. You have the love of God. But what God is, is speaking about us is that we enter into a work of the Holy Spirit instead of a project, and this project needs to be built upon the rock, upon Jesus. And many times people, they, they are in difficulty. They are banging their heads here and there. Sometimes they come to the service. The other time they don't come. They vanish. They receive a blessing from the Lord and then they vanish. They receive what they have been seeking for. They are fasting. They are praying to the Lord. God answers the prayer. And then afterwards they give, do not give the proper worth of what God has done for their lives. And this edification of the house is individual. It is between you and God. It is with your struggle with God. It, it is your dedication with God. It, it is you praying to the Lord. It is you fasting. It is you reading the Word. It is you feeding spiritually. Because the more you come closer to the Lord, the more you see the mysteries of God. And this edification, 
no matter how much we we help you, no matter how much we pray for you and we pray for you with laying of hands, which is a blessing, which is a benefit for you to seek prayer, to receive prayer, receive prayer with laying of hands. But above all, you need to have set a, a time aside for you and God, because when you come before the Lord, you're not going to be able to blame anyone. You're not going to say, oh, because my mother didn't pray for me, or my father didn't pray, or my husband didn't pray, or my wife didn't pray. No. You have a responsibility upon your own life. You make your own choices that you need to make in your own life. You are the one who makes all your own choices. We cannot choose for you. God does not force man. There is something called free will. But the Holy Spirit gives us advice. The Holy Spirit leads us. He directs us. He shows the way. But it is your responsibility and my responsibility to choose to serve the Lord according to what He expects us to. And this edification is part of this. The Word speaks. He says that you should not love the world Name what is in the world, because if you give uh, room for the pleasure of the, f the flesh and the pleasure of the eyes, they are going to kill your faith. It's an advice of the Lord. Do not love the world. Don't place your heart in the things of this world. Make an investment, a long-term investment. Make an investment for a very long time. If you build your house like this in Jesus, 50 years might pass, 100 years, 500 years might pass, 1,000 years, and you will remain firm in, the, in Jesus. You will pass from this life, but you will be eternally beside your Savior. And who are edifying their house, receiving the advices from the Lord, this construction, will remain forever. No one will topple it off. And the uh, other part of the message speaks, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. The first part speaks of the individual construction of a, a building. But now, the maintenance of this house the preservation of this house is done where? And in the city. In the group of houses, right here. We all here have a house. You are a house, I'm a house, the sister is a house, the children, they have their house, all of us. Salvation, when it's lived in Jesus, has to be lived where? Here in the city. You cannot be lived. You cannot live it outside. You cannot live isolated. When salvation is lived outside from the city, it's very dangerous because it does not remain. Oh man. Tonight, the Lord is speaking exactly about this about the ones who are having their lives in great danger. It's time to stop now. <laughs> Sounds like it is time for us to stop.
salvation that one day you received, something you one day have been able to reach through the experience that you lived in Jesus, if you chose to have God as your only God of your life, it needs to be lived like this in the service. The people there are receiving assistance, having experiences with the Lord, but they choose to live isolated. It's very dangerous. Because they become target of the enemy of our souls. They become weak. They are weakened. Because here in the house of the Father, there is plenty of bread. There is plenty of food. There is plenty of the care, special care, that you need and the care that I need for the maintenance of my life in Jesus. And the Lord has shown this tonight. A person came here very sick with anemia, anemic. In the moment of the trials, uh, the person uh, suffers a lot because the persecution, the attacks are great. The person sometimes cannot withstand it. But tonight, the Lord is giving you the understanding uh, for you to live your life here in the body. Do this. Do not risk. Run into any risk. You want to see the Lord. You want the bless, blessing from God. You want the blessing to remain in your life. You need to believe salvation here in the house of the Father. Not here in the church of Maranatha. Because church of Maranatha will not bring anybody to heaven. But it's in this project. It's this an environment where the Holy Spirit is being poured out. Where two or three, if they are here gathered in the name of the Father, you will be the target of the mercy of God. Do not miss this opportunity. Don't miss this chance that the Lord is now giving you. You need a renewal. You need to leave this place fed, nourished. And you'll only be able to do this if you surrender to God's feet. Do this tonight. And you will see how God can give you what you are seeking so much. But out of your own means, you are unable, unable to do it. But in the body, you receive everything that you need. You have the fellowship of the bread. You have the harmony. You will be able to hear the voice of the Lord. You receive prayer. You will receive the gift, spiritual gifts. And what causes you to understand and comprehend what God has for your life. Let's hear a song.
I invite the brethren to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise your holy name because salvation came to your house, Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord, because are no longer closed. We can now hear a voice. We raise your name high, Lord, because the sustenance that we receive in our house. You are our victory. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. The Lord also has given two spiritual gifts. The Lord has shown a man who came here and recently has not had peace or the joy of living. He has lost even, even hope and every meaning of life. But the Lord tonight is giving you a deliverance. The Lord is giving you, is reproaching this desire in your heart and giving you a deliverance so that you may have peace and above peace that you may have salvation. Like the brother prayed, tonight salvation came to this house because Jesus is present and you can up, uh, open up your mouth and you can glorify the Lord because the Lord will change your destination God's change your, change your luck and from this day forward you live in the presence of a, of a God who is alive a real God that can do all things
Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Lord God, we want at this moment, praise your name. And confess, Lord, with a single voice that we trust in you. And that you have been and will always be our rock, our sustenance, our help in the moment of the difficulty, Lord. We can always see the hands of the Lord coming towards to help us. We thank you for your help, for your care, for the salvation that one day was offered to us. And promptly we accepted, Lord, because we had no other choice, because there was nothing else that could bring us to your eternity and with an open heart we accepted salvation with Jesus and for this we are thankful for our call receive our praise receive our adoration and take us home in peace in your presence and so that we may have a week of victories with your help Lord is a prayer to say in the name of Jesus in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The congregation may sit down. If someone desire a prayer, an assistance, if a part of the service, if a spiritual gift, they spoke to your heart. We are here at your disposal to pray for you. We send. We want to bless you with the peace of the Lord.